artist on short set. Short set. Short set. Short set. Short set. Here's some recent work by Marcia Liu, who got her MFA in studio art from RIT's College of Art and Design. Though she started in printmaking at Shanghai University, her recent work involves finding discarded materials and transforming them into carefully assembled sculptures that become curious and amusing works of art. Marcia is our guest, and we're going to learn more about her and her work today on the short sesh. Hello, Marcia. Thanks for joining us on the short sesh. Hi. So you're finishing up your MFA in studio art at RIT, but you did your undergraduate at Shanghai University, focused mostly on printmaking. So I'm curious why you decided to come to the United States to pursue your MFA and, and do mostly sculpture. I've already learned a bachelor degree in China. So I wanted to go to another country to um, experience how people think and live. And as a bachelor degree, I only learn uh, printmaking. But what I always want to do is sculpture. Contemporary sculpture in the state is really good. And I really want to come here to learn. So I think I know the answer to this question, but is there a big difference between going to art school in Shanghai versus art school in Western New York? Wow, it's totally different. But I'm glad I went to both places. So in China, Art is more like you have to learn all the skills by step by step. It's more like traditional way. But in the state, it's like you, you just can experiment everything um, that you want to do. I cannot say it's bad or good, but it is super different. Can you summarize your experience as an international student going to art school in the United States? For me, it's pretty challenging. Chinese people thought in different way compared to um, people from the United States. Sometimes it's difficult to add my thoughts to a different culture. So I have to learn how to think in different way and how to present myself better. So that part is pretty challenging. But the good, the good part is um, I learn a lot. I learn a, another language and I talk to people. It's open my mind. I first got to know you through your printmaking, and I was always kind of struck by how you brought different elements together on the paper, almost in a collage style. What drew you to the process of printmaking to begin with? The creative process of printmaking is kind of an inherent game between controllable and uncontrollable. And I am really uh, enjoyed playing with all this um, happy accident, we call that. Wait, were you guys watching Bob Ross videos at art school in Shanghai? No, I, I, I don't know. Just back in China, when we use Chinese, we will, we will say that in Chinese also. And then I came to the United States, I just realized my professor also say that. Bob Ross was your professor? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> okay. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. There was a print that you posted recently um, called Invaders that I just couldn't stop looking at because there's so much going on in, in the print. But would you tell us more about what you were thinking as this piece came together? This piece is like the coronavirus just came up and it's like everyone needs to stay at home. And it's like back in China, there are a few places that our government a bit and all the people go out. That's the only way to keep the virus um, not getting uh, worse. It is a really effective way, but I think it's kind of like stay in the jail sometimes. So the, the dark dots, you can see that. So it, it is represents our, uh, the old Chinese landscape painting. There are mountains. So, the left part is what I kind of wish I can hide into this kind of mountains. You guys call it an angel, like an angel, just hiding the mountains and do whatever I want. But the right part is more like the reality. Some, sometimes our politics, no matter in which country, sometimes it's also the same. 
I feel like everyone inside don't want to admit what we are going to face, but we don't have any power or any choice to uh, make it better. That's why I call it Invader. Your recent work has been focused more on sculpture, but not really in a traditional sense, right? You tend to sort of find discarded objects, things that are ready to go in the trash, and you collect them in your studio space and then sort of reassemble them in new ways to create these sort of strange objects that are often met with some confusion. And sometimes they're, you know, people react with anger to this type of work. And even in the contemporary art world, this stuff is sometimes referred to as junk sculpture. So I'm curious, you know, you're coming from a traditional printmaking background. Why were you attracted to this way of making sculpture? It's like trash, waste industrial parts, daily supplies. All these materials have their own trace of history. And the junk sculpture is their second life with no industrial function. Like using a ready-made product seems to be lazy. Um, however, they are actually more difficult for me. The selection and application of each ready-made products are only added after uh, careful consideration. Um, so how and why to combine the materials with different historical traits are biggest challenges for me. What do you hope viewers see or experience when they encounter one of your sculptures? Some of the pieces I want to, I want them to be confused. After confused, and then I want to, I want them to think more, to think deeply about what they uh, they saw. You always seem to have a robotic or motorized component to the sculpture, and it adds to the sense of movement. There's usually something spinning or the sculpture is turning itself on and back off again. Why is movement and animation such an important part of this sculpture? So the traditional sculptures are like, like um, standing there and no movement. It gave me a feeling that uh, it pushed me away sometimes. So I want to create the pieces that um, not only a sculpture, but also can make the audience feel interesting first and feel close feel like the sculpture itself has blood spirit by itself so that i think in some way can make the gap between the sculpture and the audience smaller you haven't really had access to your studio lately just because of the pandemic situation but you were working on a piece that you finished up recently would you tell us more about what you were thinking as it was coming together so um as you can see, this work is a kind of exploration for the purpose of no actual purpose. And the creative inspiration comes from the doubts which haven't been solved in my personal thoughts. The work is intended as an invitation to the audience, an invitation to explore their unclear confusion. It may be serious or ridiculous, but it's exploring answers which may not have a clear direction. The pieces in the work are connected and supported by gravity, and the motor inside the fur will uh, make the whole sculpture a little bit shaking. So the unstable looking is to emphasize the sense of instability. So Marcia, I've been asking everybody this question, but um, how do you see the future? What is your perspective now as you navigate the transition from being a student artist to an emerging artist? I will say if you really, really want to be an independent artist, look more, learn more, and never refuse to because everything can teach you. Well, that's fantastic advice, Marcia. I don't have anything else to add now. Don't worry about it. Learn how to use what happens. Just kidding. I do want to thank you for hanging out with us today on the short sesh. And I appreciate you taking the time to share your work and your thoughts with us. And I hope you get back in the studio soon so we can uh, catch up and see what you've been working on. Thanks, John. Really appreciate it.